keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the fi Oh, hold up. It's Thursday already. How y'all doing? <laughs> I'm an idiot. Uh, good to see everybody. Welcome back. We didn't have a live stream yesterday, but I'm glad to have you back. We crypto after dark. Let me turn my lights on because once again, they didn't work. That's what happens when you walk in here at the last minute. And then you hastily try to get everything together. And you're like, come on, man. Quit tripping lights. They have to sync up. There we go. Glad to have everybody back. Thursdays are always fun. I know everyone uh, likes Wednesday streams sometimes too, but uh, I was feeling like crap yesterday. My swelling started to go down a little bit. My tooth's feeling a little better. It's not there anymore. Um, so the, the one's fixed. The other one's gone. So uh, I have good pain pills and some good whiskey, so we'll be all right. Let's get into it. Crypto After Dark. Uh, once again, if you haven't done so, I say this all the time, please go hit like. Likes are very important. They help the algorithm move us up. If everyone likes, we'd have 37 already. That would be awesome. While you're there, hit the subscribe bell and the notifications. Turn them on so you get alerts so you don't miss what we do, okay? Um, we do this three times a week, typically, unless I have something come up on a Wednesday. That's the one day I can, can kind of take off just in case. Um, we have some more stuff in the works for more stuff to be coming out soon. Going to try to keep on top of the market and be ready for all things. Um, we, our segment of the world is a small portion. You know, it turns out uh, we're not as, you know, we don't, the, the Americans don't really reach the market everyone thinks we reach. You know, the world is very vast. So we're trying to be more than just here. I know we have fans in Southeast Asia. I know we have fans in Europe. I know we have fans in South America and Mexico, so we're going to try to reach more people soon. That's what I'll say to that, all right? Plus, about hitting like and notifications and subscribing. When we get to 10,000, I've got some giveaway stuff to do, okay? I've got some really cool shit to give away, and you're going to want to be one of the people who wins it, okay? So please get us to 10,000. It's going to be one of you guys who wins. If anyone knows around here when I give shit away, it's for free. It's for real. And for free, I don't play games. Uh, it ain't no hundred dollars, okay? We've given away over fifty thousand dollars on this channel worth of prizes and in crypto assets, okay? What is your influencer doing? I'm not Mr. Beast. Might be pretty cool to be that one day. But we've given away over fifty thousand dollars worth of value and prizes. What is yours done? How about fifty dollars? I'm giving a hundred dollars away to the first person that likes it. Ah, oh, shut up. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. Step your game up. And I say we, not me, because you guys are included in that. So I've got Bitcoin pulled up. Let's just jump right into this. And we'll say hey, we'll say hey to everybody in a moment. I've got Bitcoin pulled up. This move did exactly what I didn't think it would do, which is push past this. And I kind of should have knew better, right? Uh, because certain influencers are starting to get bearish. Uh, and whenever they say something, I tend to do the opposite because they're wrong so much. But it's okay. I was already in some assets. We can actually go over the assets that I'm in tonight because... I put them in the I put in the Discord first. Every move that I make wallet wise is posted to the Discord. Uh, I don't post the futures trades anymore because it's neurotic to do so. It's incredibly fast and annoying. And no one can keep up. Found that out pretty quick. So I just do the spot trades and wallet activity. Anything I have, I do there and I show you. So anyway, I posted some of these moves and I'll put, I'll show you what I did here. First, let's talk about Bitcoin. I've got the regular USDT chart pulled up here. Uh, as you see, this thing broke north. Through this fib set pushed right through the golden pocket right through sniper's alley and all the way to 1272 this instantly clues me in that this move is too small here and i need to step back a little bit and the reason that is uh we've had 12 out of the last 14 candles here have been green any idea how often that happens folks well it hasn't happened in months and months and months and months but it's happening now that's a lot of green candles in a row. Do you think that's sustainable? Maybe in a bull market. Maybe if we were bullish after happening, right? And there was a lot of bullish stuff going on and everyone's got FOMO and freaked out and everyone knew retail money's coming in and all that good stuff. That's not happening right now. Oh yeah, by the way, sorry, I got hiccups. I meant to say I'm gonna try to hold this the entire stream. I wanna take it back to the old days of the YouTube channel. And there's a couple of reasons behind that and we'll get to We'll get to that too. I don't like changing who I am. I like keeping who I am real. I realize that as this YouTube channel has progressed, we started out with six people, all right? 
seven people, and then 13, then 16, then 32. And for some reason, I remember certain numbers, like 76. We had 76 subscribers at one point, all right? Um, we're almost at 10,000. Now, I know that's still a small account, relatively speaking, but it's we've come a long-ass way, y'all. We've come a long-ass way. And that's nothing to do with me. That's all y'all. more you guys like this, more you guys subscribe, more you guys share this stuff, the more people see it. I know you might think that's silly, but people look at Twitter and they see something trending. So start, you know, hashtag 786 Assassins. Hashtag 786 Assassins on Twitter. And then we'll keep tagging that. We'll keep moving that around. And we'll start saying that every single time we have a live stream. I'll do hashtag 786 Assassins. You guys share it around Twitter, Instagram, whatever it is you guys do, Discords, Telegram channels, whatever. We'll get it trending. So, salute. If you wonder what I've got tonight, Lil Jamison Black Barrel. It's one of my recent favorites. Uh, it's very smooth. It has a very good oaky flavor. I like it. It's good stuff. Regular Jameson, I'm not a huge fan of, but Jameson Black Barrel, can't knock it, all right? Jameson Black Barrel, what's up? Holler at me. Holler at me, Jameson. I'll just drink Jameson Black Barrel if you hook us up. <laughs> all right, so anyway, I want to step back for a moment and look at this move on a bigger picture. Um, I'm going to move these fibs just so we can see it a little cleaner here. Um, all right, let me... And that's not the top. Hang on. I didn't drag it down far enough. We grab that top wick because that's how we do for a downtrend. We grab the top wick and we pull the rest of the fibs to the bottom here. Now, after we've pulled the rest of the fibs to the bottom and we see that we've pulled them all the way to the bottom, now we're measuring our downtrend to see where it breaks. You see it failed the 50 here. That's why I was measuring this little move because this was its own little trend break right here. Uh, but what we've seen here recently is this thing has broken trend and then it gave us that 12 out of 14 candles green. That has ran clean to 618, the golden pocket, and it's on a higher time frame golden pocket. Now, this short-term move here, this short-term move kind of matched the other take profit lines, if you remember. So I've got that red box drawn. That's the upper move right here, this bigger move to the golden pocket, okay? You can step out on weekly and see that right there, okay? That's a weekly move, just a higher time frame, lower high so far. This has to get all the way up here and close above 21,005 for multiple days, including maybe a week. To be a higher high otherwise just a wick that pushed into a, a heavy resistance zone all right so we're not super I'm, I'm not super bullish here uh there is spot money to buy and money to be made and we'll go over those in a moment however i want to show you what i'm talking about here that's the golden pocket on a bigger move so if we step it down to that smaller move that i had originally you'll see that all of our take profit lines kind of line up with that box here uh, 618, 68, 71, all in those fibs I just pulled a moment ago, all line up with take profit levels uh, right about the same level there. If you saw that. Yeah, right there you go. So it's a little jumbled, yeah, but you can see 71, 618, and 68 are all in there together. So the answer to my riddle here is I don't think this goes too much farther. Uh, I don't know that this thing has the cojones to push past this level here. And I'm going to explain to you why now. But first, let me go say hey to everybody. 73 people on, 35 likes. Y'all go hit like, please. Uh, hit like, subscribe, and hit the notifications. Hashtag 786 Assassins. We're going to put that on Twitter, and we're going to run it. Um, let me say hey, because we always say hey to everybody. Mullet, what's up, my friend? Good to see you, brother. The only thing unsustainable in all this moonshine and whiskey that assassins will be consuming on the way down. You're damn right, mullet. And when this bull market comes back, I hope everybody comes here, comes here to hang out with me. And we all drink some moonshine together and sit around a campfire, sit around a bonfire, man. That's how we do it in the South. Um, big text, good to see you. Adam Man, thank you, Jeremy Monroe. I'm feeling better, bro. Educated Dummy Manolo. Darth, my man, sent me some good stuff today. I appreciate you, brother. Listen, you don't know how good that shit is. We probably do know. But, oh, my God, that stuff was amazing. Uh, educated Dummy, Parker55, Kanick, what's up, brother? Good to see you. Electric motherfucking Ken, good to see you, brother. Yeah. Electric Ken. Electric Ken's not on here enough. He's got a lot going on, and I get it. I've been there, bro. Um, Kevin B. From Poe, what's up, brother? Good to see you. T Tario21, what's up, brother? Good to see you. Daniel Kuntz again. JD Crypto, what's up, my friend? Knox, Parker55. 
It's uh, hey, it's Ed. I promise I'm about to get back with my friend. I can't wait. I miss you. Hey, Parker 55 with a new account. Okay, sleeper account, bro. Ghost guy, good to see you. Poochie, uh, Jag, what's up, brother? Roostar, um, Colo Colo. Hey, what's up? Is that is that Colo Coin Lau? Is that Miss Beverly? Might be. Uh, Sven, uh, Bud Wessel, JH, what's up, brother? Um, what part of Wyoming? Wyoming, bro, let's go. You are my influencer. Bro, I hope I'm not your influencer. I hope I'm just a chart guy that you happen to look at sometime. You are my influencer. Mellow on that for a moment. Um, Izam, Andreas, Crypto Shadow, Gaffer, where are those Reese cups, bro? Listen, oh my God, I'm never eating real Reese cups again. Wow. I'll put it that way. Lunatic Prophet, L-E-L, -E -E what's up? Good to see you first time here. I love it when we have new people. Which, by the way, when we have new people, please come on here, ask questions. Don't be afraid. This is not the place to be a hider, okay? This is the place to ask questions and learn. We pride ourselves on teaching people, okay? We want everybody to learn what we do, not just watch, but learn for yourself. So please ask questions. Don't be afraid. And go hit the like button, notification, and subscribe bell. Now, I told you I don't think it's going to get up this level and break it. Here's why I think that. And I'm going to pull up the RSI for a moment. And I want everyone to everyone to stick with me on this. What is the RSI? RSI is a relative strength index. What does that mean? Essentially, it's just a fancy number and a fancy moving average and a cool weighted thing that kind of shows you how strong or weak an asset is particularly acting at that moment. There are measurable levels with this, okay? We can see trends inside of this relative strength index that give us hints on what's about to happen one day to the next day to the next week, month, day, mi minute, whatever. It doesn't matter. We can see these trends. We use this data to come up with a better answer for what we're looking for. This is why we do better than retail. This is why we don't do as well as a computer because we actually have to go look at this. We don't have it pre-programmed in our brain, okay? So we're right in the middle. We're way better than retail. And we're underneath computers, so we're the guy in the middle getting the good pieces. We're not getting the baby bites, which they're all right, too, but the good pieces will work, too. What this shows us is three different zones, okay? We have the upper zone, the lower zone, and the pink strip, purple strip that you see here, which is nominal trading, all right? Nominal trading is from 70 to 30, different scales for different people. I like 70 to 30. With a midline of 50, that midline of 50 is the dotted line right here, and 40 is a line that I add in because that's an action line, you'll see that often the price bounces around the 40 level as well, if you do a little digging on it. And we have instructional videos for this to kind of give you a deeper overview. Now, I'm not going to use that right now. What I'm focused on are these three points over here that are on the top right here, okay? These are what we call overbought. Anything above this dotted line right here where that purple is, is overbought, meaning that a ton of buys have come in and there's so, many, uh, there's so many buys in a row that it exhausts and you run out of people buying, okay? You run out of strength or you top out on strength. Imagine weightlifting, you've, you've, you've done 10 reps and your arms start to get tired, so you need to slow down a little bit, okay? It's the same way with charts and the same way with buys and sales. This thing has started to top itself out. The last three times it topped out at this level, what happened and when were they? Well, right now, obviously, January 12th, 2022, our level that we hit is 81.0, okay? 81. The top level for this is 100. Usually doesn't get that high. The last time we were even close to this level was late October 21, the end of the bull run. The end of the bull run. How does that sound like what's going to happen now? Time before that? January 2021, the midway point, right? The, mid, the, the midway point of the bull market, 2020 to 2022 was the bull market. The, the, the beginning of the bull market, great. Midway point, great. End, great. Now where are we at? This level, 89 in a bull market. We're not in a bull market, so I need you to understand that. And what level did I circle like this on purpose? This was double or triple tops all in a group. 
as you see one peak two peaks maybe three peaks right here one peak two peak three peaks right here one peak so i didn't count that one peak looks like two peaks and then this big humongous one all right point being here that we haven't seen it get this overbought in a really long time plus in that time frame we've had all of these oversolds down at this level is oversold what does this tell me well quite simply this clues me in that we're about to run out of steam here we're about to run out of juice to keep this run going when we run out of juice to keep this run going what happens we retrace when we retrace what happens price starts to come back down and those same FOMOers start to freak out and think maybe they shouldn't have bought so they stop buying now you're losing volume once you start losing volume, you start losing retail. And once you lose retail, down you go. Because those computers are already running that trend before you ever got to that. So, I don't see it going too much farther past this level. Now, does that mean it can keep going? Sure it can. I'm wrong all the time. And I put my glass down again. <laughs> so, what I wanted to show you here more so anything is, this is trend based. And we've ran a trend. And now what? you're probably going to run out of juice. Now, that speaking, let's go look at weekly because, hey, that's a totally different story, isn't it? It takes much longer. Shit, I spilled whiskey. That is a cardinal sin. Spill whiskey. Let's have a drink for that one. All right. It's a little smoother on the weekly. It takes a while for this to play out. The last time we peaked out, end of the, or I'm sorry, end of the, January 21 during the bull market, we peaked out. We happened to run down here to about this 40 line, as you see after that, and had our secondary bounce. That was the end of the bull market, 21, all right? From there, we went oversold, and we rarely go oversold, as you see. The last time we went oversold, what happened? We had this big run up right here. That was 19. That was May through June of 19. We're not there yet, are we? Look what happened back in January and February. Way back here, January and February was way down here. That's about where we're at now, just a little higher along now. And we've started to butt into that 40 line. I'm very curious if we're going to be able to maintain this level or not. Um, this is a good sign. I mean, you know, it's broken through some barriers here and done some work, and I'm happy to see that. Uh, and you do have some bullish divergence here. Let me go look at the chart or it's bullish convergence, you have a bit of a bullish move up at the end, but it's overall kind of down. So I would say that's bullish divergence still. Um, the good news is this thing has finally given you some price action to be happy about. The bad news is you're going nowhere fast. You're still inside this big falling wedge and you haven't broken out. And because you haven't broken out, you feel frustrated. Now, obviously, you're going to see some people draw this wedge differently and they're going to say that I drew it wrong, and this is actually the way it goes, right? Because Keith doesn't know what he's doing. Fine. Say whatever you need to say. It's running dead into resistance, even if I didn't have this trend line here. We'll zoom in a little more, and you can see it. Bottom of this trend right here is where I thought this may go. Way back here on December 12th. Didn't quite happen. Uh, it stopped short of that, and now it's doing it. So we're going to see if it can maintain this level break this level and get loose because if it just stays right here that's no bueno this needs to get up here above this resistance level otherwise it's going to get pinned down by pressure and roll over and play dead two options how far can it go and where will it go can go all the way up to 23 24 26 000. all right that just so happens to line up with the 200 moving average right here about 25,000 fully possible if it happens that's why I went ahead and bought some assets but not a shit ton I don't fully buy this move just yet because of the way that daily topped itself out kind of gives me the heavy jibbies with with the weekly running into resistance like that that this thing ain't gonna have a juice to maintain this especially if it pushes up again and smacks that 200 day moving average right there it comes up and smacks that 200 day moving average it is highly likely it gets rejected okay and we get a minimum of come back down here to support to 18,000 at a minimum, at a minimum, all right? Um, I don't think it busts through the daily 200 moving average like that. It's liable to get hung up. Next, if we look at the CME chart, I've got some different things drawn out here for you. All of these retrace levels that I have marked in yellow, those were 50% retraces from their trend. 
Okay, right here was a 50% retrace, as you see. We have 89 people and 59, uh, 54 likes. Y'all, please go hit like, man. The, the likes really help us push us up the algorithm. More people will see this. Hit the subscribe and notifications bell while you're there so you don't miss streams, so you can be here when they start. You don't miss what we do because I think our information is extremely valuable. Um, you're not going to get signals from me or none of that bullshit. None of it's financial advice. I just try to keep it real 100% and do pure technical analysis. Even when your influencers say they don't do technical analysis, they do and they don't even realize they do it, especially when they start analyzing things that they don't realize they're analyzing and they don't even realize they're using technical analysis. Technical analysis in everything that you do in life. Someone asked me today, how much time do you have to spend learning? How much time does it take per day to learn this? And the answer is about 5 to 15 minutes per day. The longest time that you spend taking a shit. If you're pooping, you're probably scrolling through Instagram or Snapchat or TikTok anyway. Why not watch an instructional video on how to do technical analysis? They're free. Why not? Okay. If you need help with technical analysis, that's what we got you for. That's bright. I'm sorry. Holy shit, that's bright. Instructional videos right here. I'll copy them for you. And I'll send them over to the chat right now, directly. Bam. There you go. Now you have videos that you can watch while you're taking a dump, 5 to 15 minutes a day. The first four videos will change how you see everything. Okay? Sweet. I recorded that too, just in case. All these 50 retraces have come in between 618 retraces, if you see that. Okay? Essentially, 50 retraced and 618. 50 retraced and 618. I could measure them out for you and show you. Just take my word for it. I've already done the work for you. 50 retrace, and now another 618. And it's stuck right here in the same box again. Now, yes, it did break this red trend line. I'm hopeful that it can hold it because I'd like the positions that I'm in to continue going, right? That would be nice because that would help out those alts that I bought and get a little higher. Now, I think still we may, we may fail from here, but we'll see. Um, I don't like the way this RSI looks on the CME chart either. This is the first time it's been overbought again since October of 21. It didn't make overbought all the way since then. And the last time it went overbought, August 20, October 21, big fall down all the way back to oversold. I would go measure that, but I'm not sure it's necessary because I don't think that trend applies in the same way. Now, if it did apply in the same way, here's what we did on the way down. 1272-1414, roughly on the way down. And we can run that same trend on what we have now. And we can look and see if it fails right now, what levels do we go to on the CME chart, which is Chicago Merchantile Exchange. Essentially, that's the only publicly investor, publicly investor, public, uh, publicly institutionally traded futures market in the U.S. Bitcoin and Ethereum only uh, are the only cryptos. The levels I get right here are 14,000, 13,005 and roughly 12,500. Those three levels become targets to me, and I've even got one of them drawn out right here near that box at around 13.6, okay? Uh, I could probably readjust these boxes because I didn't expect it to go quite that high. I'll do that after the stream. Not that big a deal. More so, the point is, there's a clear-cut chance this thing continues to fail south, even though this little short-term trend line broke, and I get it. You're all going to get excited and happy. I don't buy this. I really don't. Um, let's talk a moment about the assets that I am in, and I'll show you which ones I bought and uh, why I bought them. So let's start with ICP because I bought ICP the other day. Oh, let me pull them up. And these are all off of the uh, coins that I made on the five videos, okay? Five videos I made, all kind of different coins, all kind of different picks, charts, everything for you that I'm going to be doing personally. And I adhered to that because I said I would, okay? A man of my word. All right, ICP, I went ahead and got this one. Why did I go ahead and get this one? Well, a couple of reasons. Number one, it broke the trend line. I was watching for this one because it had done nothing yet. Uh, number two, it had fallen so far and had very, very, very little upward pressure. It's finally getting some of that upward pressure. RSI still not overbought. I'm kind of going to trade this one along with Bitcoin. But when I pull a big weekly fib where I think this price will eventually go down here to two bucks, I get this 236 level, which also happens to line up with some other levels that I was looking at. I picked that one as a take profit level of about 490 plus. Uh, because I think that's a good spot to stop it and take my take my chips and walk away. Um, this was the largest position that I bought. I forget how much I bought of it. I have to look after. Um, I have to look after. But this was the first position I bought. 
Um, next, I bought uh, SHA Safe Haven. This is also on the coin list. All right, similar fashion here. This thing fell so far. Look at this. It just fell and fell and fell and fell, right? No relief. Now that it's getting some of this relief, I wanted to get in on it. Um, again, this one hadn't moved in comparison to others. Uh, this one is very, very late mover. And because of that, I was able to get in very low down here at the green line. I marked all my green lines here of what I actually did. I'm um, doing well on this one. Um, render. Finally doing well on this one. This one took a moment. It was a little slower than I thought. Uh, but little trend line broke. Move up. Same situation. I bought it back here. It's doing well. Uh, I have a 20% take profit right here on this because the 200 moving average is right there. And I think it's probably going to get hung up in there somewhere. I don't expect it to go too much farther past that. Could go all the way up here to my range line, but that's a dicey proposition. I'm not sure. So because of that, I'm going to take my profits a little sooner at 20%. Um, what else? Uh, CeeLo. Same situation on CeeLo. All these positions are doing well so far. Uh, this one, I bought 500. I wrote it down. I wrote it down. Um, I wrote down the rest of them in, uh, in Discord. I, I put them in. I post everything I do in the Discord, in the Unlimited chat, and the Keys Entries chat, so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, again, that's only spot, not futures trades. They're, they're too hectic to post. Um, all right, then Cocos. Uh, this one did great for a day, and I didn't catch this big wick because I was, wasn't feeling good. <laughs> I had my teeth pulled, and I had a root canal. I was pissed. So <laughs> I tried to sleep. I was on painkillers. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I didn't catch this big wick. So, okay, no big deal. I have my take profit a little higher anyway. So I think this one may do its move and keep going. I'm still in a good position here. My stop loss is set. I'm fine. I'm, I'm going to move the stop loss up into profits probably tonight because um, I think this one's going to hold on. But I only bought 250 worth, right? Not a very big buy. Uh, Rose, similar situation. Hasn't broken this upper trend line yet, and this gives me pause. Okay, I was a little sketchy on this one. Then it threw me a couple good green candles here and kind of rebounded and held itself and held its own. So it gives me faith that it may continue doing so. All right? Uh, no guarantees here. It may fail right up here at this red trend line. Um, so I'm watching closely, all right? Watching closely on this one. I'm ready to cut and run if I have to. Uh, but it's in profits, so I'm okay. Um, Hero. Hero did well yesterday and then pulled back when I didn't catch it. I got sleepy because I didn't feel good. Uh, I was feeling better, but again, I got sleepy and drowsy on medicine. So, I didn't see that big wick. <laughs> but hopefully it uh, comes back up here and closes up here somewhere. I think this follows Bitcoin uh, in profits. Um, CWS, Nord, Nord, barely in profits here, okay? Uh, it, I caught a wick and didn't realize I caught a wick. I thought this was going to move a little quicker. It's very, very low volume. Uh, and it's trying to do well, so I'm okay with it. Uh, CWS. CWS did better at first. Now it's kind of pulled back a little bit and it may get stuck under this trend line. So I'm watching very carefully, okay? Um, these I should be I should be more careful with because it was under trend, all right? But it was the same situation where I haven't moved much. Other ones had moved up very well. Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the head alts moved up. That tends to shift to the shitters, and this is a pure shit coin, okay? Most of these were all shit coins. Uh, but there's good percentage in shit coins, which is why I did them. Again, all these moves were posted in the unlimited chat. Let's go answer some questions real quick. It's been 30 minutes already. Damn, you guys are fast, bro. Um, all right. All right. I think I have more pain to go, Keith. Uh, you're right. OZO says, I think we have more pain to go. I believe you're right. I don't think this is over. Uh, but I don't want to be so close-minded that I miss things because that's one of the mistakes that I made last time. And this hints on an important thing right here, everybody. Um... Listen, you're going to make mistakes. That's part of it. Everyone screws up. It's okay. One of the mistakes that I made last bull market was I got in a little late because I had been following and listening to some people that weren't the smartest, and I got convinced that it was going to be down, more down coming. I didn't want to be so pig-headed this time. I wanted to be more open-minded, so I went ahead and bought some positions, but not all of them. You can always buy these moves. And a little later, you're just going to have to not get all your profits and have to wait a little bit more for that chart to turn around the way you want it to sometimes. Well, that's okay. You're not missing the end of the world. So I bought the positions that I bought. Again, I wanted to be a little bit more open-minded. They have all done well so far. Uh, I'm cool with it. So I'm going to keep an eye on these. Again, I'm ready to pull and run if I have to. I didn't overinvest. I only spent about 5% of my portfolio on the particular ones that I bought. 
Again, be safe, practice safe trades, set a stop loss, set your take, pre take profit levels. Don't be a degenerate. This is literally what we do the opposite of. We're the opposite of degenerates, okay? We don't call ourselves degenerates. We just call ourselves investors, just like you, okay? So we just happen to be a little bit better than retail. Be safe, everybody. I recorded that part too. <laughs> um, dead cat bounce. I don't know if it's a dead cat bounce. Right now, it kind of feels like just a short upward retracement. So much downward pressure, a little bit of upward volume is actually good for more downward pressure, more lower highs. Um, one hour tonight, Roostar. Yep, one hour every Thursday. Chris Nanya, uh, would you would, would another short squeeze, squeeze increase the buys on the RSI? Both the momentum indicators use both either. They tend to mirror each other. Thank you, Mullet. Um, a short squeeze would have to be way more than we've got right now. It would have to look like Bed Bath & Beyond, which I'll pull up in a moment. The man said he must be short and pissed off because he lost money. You're talking about me? I'm not pissed or nothing. What are you talking about? I don't know if you're talking about me or not. Um, maybe that other guy. I don't know. But I'm not mad at all, bro. Um, but I appreciate you talking and commenting. Maybe you are talking about me. I'm not pissed at all. <laughs> the mansion, who he, yeah. Uh, this is not retail. This is all institutions. Uh, see, that's where you're actually correct. Uh, it's mostly institutions. Everything is mostly institutions and uh, big investors that run bots. It's over 90% of the market. Um, over 90% of the market that moves at any given time is bot trades, not people. What you're going to see on the tail end of it every single time is retailers and investors fumbling in because that's what they do. Um, Bill Childers. But you don't have to agree. Agreement is not required on here. I actually appreciate it when, come, when people come on here and talk. So don't, you don't got to get mad, leave or anything. Uh, again, it's all technical analysis here. I don't really care about any of that. It's all chart based. Um, how about AVAX? We can look at that in a moment. Uh, they're holding for long term and going to sell it to you in the future when you finally decide to buy. Oh, so you are talking shit about me. Right. Okay. So I've already bought positions and we talked about this. Uh, <laughs> I don't get what you're trying to do, but thank you for being here, brother. So every channel should be way more subscribers. Uh, so I wish so, Soto. It, we should have more, but I can't make anyone subscribe. Um, that's how they make profit. It's a business. It's called resale. But yeah, you got like, I don't know any of this, which is hilarious. Uh, it's all good. I don't know how long you think I've been doing this, but it's been a long time. Um, we won't be there buying the top. We're better than that here. Yeah, you could actually go back. <laughs> you could actually go back and watch some of the streams and see what we do here and see how accurate we've been. We have a very high accuracy rate. It's not just me either, by the way. It's many, many people. It's not just one person. So uh, I get the resentment. You don't like what I'm saying. It's fine. Agreement is not required, though. Um, Halvin is a time frame. Like, oh, my God, we talk about this all the time. So let me pull this up real quick before you leave because you may have already left, but I don't want that to happen. Uh, this is the historical Bitcoin chart. We talk about this multiple times every week. Uh, we are currently not quite halfway to halvening. Before happening, we have a run up. But before that, we have a pullback at the end of 2023, which happens every single end of the midway point after summer. Pullback after summer. Pullback after summer. I should have moved that line. Whoops. Every single time we have a happening, we have a pullback the summer before. We also have a run up that summer before that has to happen. We haven't quite gotten there because we haven't quite reached our halfway point or our historic retrace levels. We talk about this all the time. I wish you would come hang out more. I know you probably don't like me for some other given reason or you just don't like what I'm saying because you think I'm fudding or whatever. It's got nothing to do with that, brother. I'm here to make money just like you. Um, Mr. Q, local top. That's probably about right. Um, utilize your job time as well if you can. If you can build your self-knowledge on another skill set, you'll be two times as assessed. Well, thank you, brother. All right. I prefer Flux over ICP. Fair enough. I have Flux too. I just didn't, not on this one. I just, the, the chart was a little bit more ahead than ICP. And that's why I picked ICP. Um, if you're not buying now, you'll be. <laughs> okay. Remember this. Uh, the mansion has all the answers. He says, if we're not buying now, we'll be buying higher later. Okay. So this is the bottom. Why not? He says, I can give you more examples. I could keep telling you why, but I'm not sure you would hear them. Uh, when you're closed-minded, you really don't like to hear what anybody else has to say or agree with what anybody else has to say. That's, I've, had, I've been doing this for a long time, brother. You're not the first person to do this. Plenty of people doubt me. In fact, every single time someone doubts me, motivates me a little bit more. So, like, 
nothing wrong with giving me a hard time, but you're just making me work harder. I mean, it's not a good thing to make me work harder for you. <laughs> uh, thoughts on Slana? Yeah, we'll pull up Slana in a moment. Thank you for asking. Um, I'm trying to catch all these comments. We don't FOMO in here. We use TA for better decisions on positions. We have multiple indicators that put us in the green zone at 75% time frame. That's a very good point. You will be left behind and you will FOMO in. Okay. Um, if we're left behind, we'll wait for a nice retracement to get in the entry. Exactly what Daniel said. You act like, <laughs> ah, it's all good. I'm so n new to most of this. It's over my head. Love your character. I'll probably chime in. Here. Thank you, brother. Awesome. That's what we do here. We try to teach on an elementary level because this stuff is fairly elementary and it doesn't have to be as complicated as everyone makes it. Um, I lost a couple thousand this past week on my own. Bad to you. I'm taking a break from the markets. And that's fine, brother. That's okay. It's nothing wrong with walking away when you make a mistake. I doubted Keith for a while. I'm a believer now. I'm learning from him. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris Nunya. That's awesome, bro. Uh, I, I appreciate when people come in here and they don't like it. Honestly, he'll probably come back and watch some more because I'm not being a dick to him. I'm just disagreeing, right? We don't have to be dicks to each other. We can disagree. It's okay. Uh, I heard Twitter. I heard Twitter Keith is hodling his flare tokens. Bro, David R., if I could ever get my flare tokens, I'd sell this shit off them things. They ain't never going to give me to me. They'll never give me my flare tokens. Finance US was what I went through. The haters can just go do their own thing. I totally agree, bro. I'm glad you've bought. And it's cool. I'm actually happy. Um, but, you know, it's all good. We, I mean, again, we do this for a living. This is my job. This is not a hobby to me. This is my job. And I know you're going to think, well, you suck at your job. That's fine. I wouldn't be here if I sucked at my job. Don't forget that. Um, BTBT, never heard of that one. Um... <laughs> Australia was just guessing from the roof. <laughs> Book a one-on-one -on -one Keith with Keith idea. Thank you, Sean Michael. That's awesome, bro. Again, we could talk about more a while. I think it'll go down. I don't think you'll listen to me anyway. So let's move on. Um, it's not the first person to talk shit to me. I'm kind of used to it, dude. It happens literally every day. Most of the time, I can just not look at it because it's Twitter. And most people try to talk shit to me on Twitter. are just already muted. Uh, but then someone will send me a screenshot. Anyway, AVAX broke the short-term trend line right here, but it hasn't broken the long-term trend line, okay? I'm going to pull this long-term trend line up here to show you. And again, this week's got more time and it. it's not even over yet. But you have a long-term trend line here on AVAX as well. And this kind of lets us know that even if we move up here, we're probably going to roll back again by the end of 2023, okay? The end of 2023 is our last capitulation point between, that'll be between kind of September to the quarter one of 2024. Um, that'll play out to the end there. Once that plays out to the end and gives us our final capitulation, well, then it's head start to go, all right? It's actually a really good idea to do that because what we're going to do here is we're going to buy some stuff now, like I bought some stuff now, all right? I'm going to make some profits. And what I've already got to trade with, we're going to ride up and then back down in 2023 and rebuy some more. And I'm hoping to double what I've got to trade with because if I can double what I've got to trade with, that's a home run. That's really a home run. Uh, that's more money than I can grasp, right, to start with. Because I only started this with $6,000 last time. And I managed to push this to nearly three quarters of a million. So don't tell me what you can't do. If I can do that, then you can do that, okay? Uh, I managed to do some really awesome things in life, right? Do this for a living now instead of having to go do the nine to five because that really, really hindered my time doing this. Um, you know, I was able to take care of some land. We were able to do a lot of stuff. I rented a Lambo. It was awesome. Went to Vegas twice. Paid for two different trips. All business expenses, right? Set up my own business. Man, it's been a wild trip. These, 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 it's been a wild trip. And uh, honestly, I couldn't have done it without y'all because, you know, there's been times where I've been wrong. And luckily, we had people in our Discord that were smart and didn't just want to argue who would help me out to notice me a problem. And I would say, oh, man, you're right. Dang it, I missed that. One thing you'll learn about coming on and making comments on YouTube is you need to be humble because nobody likes a bragger, bro. Um, I made three quarters of a million, yeah, but honestly, I left probably half a million on the table. I left that on the table. And I'm okay with saying that I left that on the table because that was my failure. Um, I have to learn to do better next time. And it's okay. I'll take that lesson and learn from it. That's something that not a lot of people grasp, right? There's a lesson to be learned. Um, and if you didn't learn a lesson, you didn't learn anything. Uh, one lesson you'll learn is not to doubt me um, because you're really just stoking the fire. This is very similar to Bitcoin AVAX here, all right? 
I've learned to handle hecklers pretty good too, so it doesn't bother me. Uh, 618 cut right here on AVAX. I'm not convinced of this, and I'll tell you why. Because AVAX isn't as demanding of the golden pocket as it is of the Sniper's Alley. It's not quite as mature as Bitcoin. It's still a very young token, honestly. It hasn't been long, very long. Uh, but I think this may have one more leg left in it, even though it already went overbought, right? I think there may be a double overbought hiding in here because you've broken this resistance level right here, this purple line, and you're still floating above it. There may be one more leg up right here, okay? Pretty cool. Uh, I think there may be one more leg. That's not a guarantee. This thing could fail and fall back under this 50 fib. And if that does, that's kind of our sign that it's time to turn around. But like I said, I think Bitcoin may have a little bit more up. And if Bitcoin has a little bit more up, then so will AVAX, all right? Uh, it's likely anyway. Um, we'll see one step at a time, no guarantees. If we fall under this 50 fib back under resistance, which also may happen, well, that's a sign that it's time to walk away, right? Um, Solana, let's have a look at Solana. I almost bought Solana, but I didn't because it went a little bit too far. A little bit too fast, and we're aware that it's going to pull back and stop some. Um, see how far this went? It went to my second box here, my second take profit box. Um, I didn't know exactly how far it would go. This looks just like CRV, uh, what CRV did, but Solana's running out of time here. Honestly, if it doesn't get up to this box in the next day or two, it's not gonna. Uh, the Fib set's running out of time. It's too sharp. You've had too much upward volume. And the buy is too high on the RSI. You've gotten all up to 75. Again, you could push it a little farther, right? But it's going to run out of steam here. It has to. It has to. The RSI can't go much higher past that. In a bull market, maybe, but not in the middle of a bear market. You're not going to have that kind of upward volume come in and be maintainable. Um, you could probably find all kind of random reasons why it's going to do that. doesn't matter to me the why. More so matters to me the when. And it looks like it may have a day or two left in it before it completely falls on its face. Uh, I didn't even have the MACD pulled up there. I don't need it. Um, I think this one may be slowing down. So I'll show you here that it's also getting close to the 50 fib on the more larger move. Um, again, that 50 fib is going to play hell. It's not going to be an easy, easy kick. Uh, if this rolls over and falls, this could come down back past this local low right here. Uh, this local low of about $8. If it goes below that local low of $8, it opens up 4 to $5. Uh, which is where I'm looking to get Solana because I think that's a better place. Now, I'm hoping the other guy is listening to this still. Probably not. I think he already left because he's fed up with me, and that's okay. I get fed up with myself too. <laughs> um, I'm able to take it on the chin these days. But I think this may have more fail in it. I don't think we've seen the last of the Solana floor. At least $8 would make sense. And if it doesn't go to $8, give me 9 bucks, And we'll try that spot because, like I said, once we get around the end of February, there's not going to be much down left. I mean, it just isn't. There's not much down left at that point because we're running out of time cyclically in the path that is crypto that is very repetitive. Um, all right. Let's see. We should have shorted flare tokens. I've uh, been down 80%. Absolutely, bro. Keith been shilling, uh, shilling Jesse Smoulet coin, bro. I ain't shilled that Jesse Smoulet coin, but he tried to give me a damn Jesse Smoulet address right there, that HGTP crap. He tried to give me that shit like I'm going to shill that stuff and ask what it is. Nah, god dang it. Okay, J. Ron Rowe, that was funny. All right, Rue Star, brother, get you some rest, brother. Thank you for coming. I'm banking the I'm banking on the resurrection of David Moss. <laughs> I doubt that shit happens, too. Uh, nobody likes a braggart. I'm the greatest. You're stupid. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, is the rumor that he's leaving 786 to team up with Kevin Cage and going to a, for a Jesse Smollett world tour? Bro. I can't get those guys to talk to me, but if you guys want to extend out the invite to try to get them to talk to me, I would love that. I would change my Twitter banner, change all that, change my avatar banner, because I still have that Photoshop uh, picture that I can modify. I saved it because I was hopeful that one day those guys would come around, but they've completely blocked me out and just hopefully forgotten about me. They may not have forgotten about me, but you know that kind of changed everything for that guy. And it didn't change a lot for the other guy, realistically speaking. It didn't change much for him. He's going to continue doing him. Uh, he's got a way more bigger following, too, though. So um, if y'all guys want to reach out for me, I'll be happy to talk to them. But I doubt they'll. You can ask in the DMs who they are, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain it to you then. Um, he said, Gaffer said, dude, must be Delta neutral. Ha, ah, not that one. Not that one. You just sometimes in life realize that you spend a lot of time on nothing. 
Now, some good came out of it. I will, I will admit some good came out of it. Uh, but on a one-on-one -on -one personal level, I feel like I failed really bad because I feel like I gave more than I got, which is a uh, toxic relationship. I've spoken about that before. When you give more than you get, that's a toxic relationship. And I feel like that's what may have happened. When you take it to the extent that I took it and extended out the olive branch that I extended, and then you dismiss me, I got a problem with that. I really, really don't like being dismissed. I really, really don't like being dismissed. Much like my guy right here was doing a moment ago, dismissing me and saying that I didn't, was wrong or whatever, and I'll be FOMOing. What the hell are you wrong? What the hell are you talking about? But dismissing me, man, you guys are pushing me farther. And I'm going to do even better by dismissing me. You have no idea what you're doing. It's kind of like Eminem and 8 Mile. You're giving me ammo. All right? <laughs> Keep feeding me ammo and watch what happens. I'm going to shoot my shot. Um, bro. <laughs> Jesse Smule coined shake weight world tour. Jeremy, God dang it. When Mullet remembers about the shake weight, the originator of the shake weight joke but for, for that guy. <laughs> That's great. Uh, tumble, tumble DD, tumble DD, keeping it real, bro. That's pretty good. Keeping it real, bro. Smole and DOD. <laughs> That's good. Jeremy Monroe. <laughs> oh, God dang it. That was great. All right, so yeah, let's do BTBT because someone mentioned that one. And I didn't, I've never seen that one. Oh, it's a, it's a NASDAQ commodity. Okay, cool. Yeah, you see the aggressive move of this right here? And I got to pull up being, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. I missed that one. Very aggressive move up here. However, be mindful that this is still under trend right here. Okay, be careful. This thing could backfire on you. Now, maybe that's already broken short term. Yeah, it probably has, but it's also overbought. So be careful here. Let's see if it's running in any um, moving averages. It is it's running to the 100. May have a little bit more juice up to 149, but that would be about as high as I would put it. And that's still another 30% move up. Uh, that'd be a long ass way for a commodity to go. Be careful here. Uh, yes, it could do this same move, but the uh, margins are smaller now than they are over here. So you may get more consolidation. Um, let's have a look at the cloud, shall we? I'm going to FOMO. Can you believe that shit? Somebody really told me I'm going to FOMO. <laughs> ah, that's great. You're going to FOMO. That's amazing, dude. Oh, that's good shit. That's a good laugh. I love being told I'm going to Oh, my God. You have no idea what you're doing. All right. Um, Yeah, this one still hasn't got four or four on the cloud. You got two or three more days before this four out of fours. Uh, but you may get more slide over, right? Um, It may be even more than two or three, two or three days. This may have a short retracement before it's time to go again. Maybe it dances in the cloud or dances on top of the cloud. Uh, but with that much RSI already used up, it hasn't went overbought since August of 21, six months ago, seven months ago, um, six months ago, five months ago, I'm sorry. Uh, January 21 before that. It's a similar time frame as crypto. Um, be careful here. This may backfire on you. If you're going to buy it, I would definitely set a stop loss. I would set a stop loss at 88 cents uh, because that's the recent local low. And that way, if it does backfire and start going the other way, you get out with a small loss. Uh, that would be what I would do. Again, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, all right. Um, let's look at XRP because multiple people ask me about XRP. So, I guys want you to look closely for a moment at a particular spot spot here this is all right this isn't even the full chart hang on let's pull up the full chart and get all the data on here i know dr manson hates this having data but we're going to show it anyway because if you control me brother i can, can kind of troll you back um all right so right here was your move in 18 all right, I want you to see this move in 18. See, it's kind of an up, a little bit of a double top here. Uh, that was September through November of 18, an even-numbered year. All right, here we are, same thing. September, November of 18, kind of a little double top right there. See that? All right, then after that double top, what happened? Got a lot of downward pressure. A lot of downward pressure through 19. A lot of downward pressure through 19. Not great. 
Look where we're at right now, getting close to that level. But between that, what did we get? So December, January is where we're at now. You got sideways. And then it went sideways and then kind of broke trend and went up. How far did it go? Well, this is the beauty of measuring. From the top of this 2018 move to the bottom here, we can see we did about a 50 retrace. We come right over here and do the same thing to this. Start at the top, pull to what appears to be the bottom. You got the same setup, 50 retrace. And I even gave you a little slack right here and said this could go a little farther. It could go all the way to 786, which is 50 cents. That's where I put my top in 2024 for XRP. 50 to 53 cents. That's where I think it'll stop in 2023. Why? Well, because it's the exact same move that it did at the exact same time in the bear market last time. Okay. Then after that, look at the backside of 2023. Look how ugly it is. This is 2019, right? All this was 2019 all the way out through here. Okay. Let's go over here to second. Same thing over here. I've got the, the top mark right here where I think it'll come in. After this top, you're going to have all this nastiness to deal with, right? All this nastiness to deal with. Will it go all the way down to 15 cents? I don't necessarily know that it will. But that is the high time frame, local bottom. It may stop up here around 18 to 20 cents, and that's okay. Anywhere down there I'm comfortable with because that's our last capitulation before we enter our bull cycle, okay? This is basic stuff, guys. I'm not being super, super hardcore technical here. I'm just following previous price action to look at what may happen again. And you may think, oh, that's definitely not going to happen again because of the lawsuit and all that shit. This is previous to the lawsuit. Similar situation back in the day, all right, all the way back to 14, 15, right? Um, similar time. Uh, June 15, and see so we had our happening on a 17, so the timelines are a little different, all right? But we can still go through here and kind of find what happened. Um, this was our top, then we rode over and found a bottom into the end of 2016, into the end of the 2015 to 2016, we found our bottom. Then we balanced out, rode all the way to pre happening This is August 16, right? Happening was over here. Um, this is August 16, but we rode all the way out and did a similar move. It wasn't that much different than what's happening right now. Okay. It's really not that much different. And you get a similar thing, ride out, come up, dance with the trend line a little bit. Then we'll break it and we'll move up. That's not the correct drawing, but that's similar to what's going to happen. Okay. Uh, I already know this because we've been through this game before. This is not my first bull market. It's not my first bear market. Okay. Lived through this before. I'm fully prepared for what's going to happen. Not scared a little bit. Um, Manolo says trias. Let's look at trias. Oops, oops, oops. All right. I know that particular guy just saw me from Twitter or something and it's talking trash to me. That's okay. A lot of guys on Twitter don't like me. It's okay because people really have a hard time with reality on Twitter. All right, um, it's a doozy. Can you look at s -Fun? No, I'm not looking at Ponzi's. Um, please look at Gala. What drove it that hard? A lot of downward sell pressure combined with an upward retrace did what it did. Um, what if the SEC count court case is settled? What will happen in the next couple of months? The XRP court case is not going to be settled in the next couple of months, likely. And if it does, we're going to get that June move toward 50 cents. And there's your excuse for why it happened. I don't really care about the court case. We will have already bought and sold beforehand. That's what we did last time. We sold two or three days before the court case happened. And why did we do that? Because the chart told us to. I even made a live stream with Neil deGrasse Tyson in the corner saying, I don't know, man, I'm out. You can go back and find that. You can go back and find that live stream when I told you I was going to sell. I sold. I then sold and watched the chart go down afterwards. I didn't take that live stream down on purpose. If I'm not mistaken, it's previous 20, 2020. No, what is it? Is it Oh, gosh. It's 2020, I think. You have to go back and look. It's been a couple of years, though. But I, I, remember, I remember that one specifically. Um, XRP loves 30 cents. I'm big XRP holder, hopeful. But if you're right, I'll snag some more. Yeah, I hold nothing. I don't believe that XRP is a new world currency. That's all horse shit. 
uh, whatever the government says our new world currency is, is what our new world currency is. I, I seriously don't believe that they're going to use XRP for what all the shillers tell you they're going to use XRP for. Otherwise, they wouldn't have it. We would already have it, or the government would already have it, or the government would just make the same thing, copy it, and say it's ours. That's the way the government does things, by the way. They don't just buy whatever a private company, especially when it comes to finance, sells them. They're going to use their own thing. Why would they use XRP to move money when they could just make their own thing and move money? Because that's what they're going to do. You think they can't copy the technology? Of course they can. HBAR is faster than XRP anyway. Anybody tell you that? Whoops. Um, but, hey, again, I don't care if you hold. That's your thing. I don't do it because I know it loses money, especially when the right time to hold is only for a few select months every couple of years. Other than that, you really don't need to be in anything except stable coins or cash. And that's just, uns that's just an unsettled fact. You can't argue with it. Um, all right, so Trias moved over the trend line. But again, I think this one looks similar to Matic and BNB and Morpheus Network and a few others, uh, Tailcoin, that have broken the trend and moved sideways. Buying a Doge is a good example. Doge has done something similar and ended up making a fallen wedge, right? And this one seems to be doing better than that. Uh, but I still think there's more down in it here. Uh, I don't think everything's going to survive a Bitcoin pullback. I think this may come back and, trust, and test this trend line at some point. Now, at the moment, still not a sale over the 200 moving average. Very few assets are over the 200 moving average. So there may be more up in it here. And that's a good thing because it's getting its run and going. Uh, I don't like a lot of these to go past the 50 fib or the 786 fib. Some of them may. All right, so be careful. Be careful. If you can get more out of it, please do so. Please get more out of it. I'm happy for everyone who can do better and make a little bit more. Um, so that's got to be, man, that's tough. That might be stuck under trend still. Gosh, that would suck. All right, let's not use that level. Let's go back to March. April. Let's do April here. Yeah, that makes more sense. See, that move would have already happened, though. That's tough. I'm not sure this is the right spot for this. I think this has got more movement in it one way or the other because it doesn't seem to line up right correctly with the trend lines. So this 50 fib is at 237. You may get a run up to that, and that may be the last run for 2023 for this one. We have seen the case where alts have moved before Bitcoin and Ethereum by themselves, and then they didn't do anything else after that until the bull market started and then into the bull market some. Like it got all of its run out to begin with and lost all of its juice. Um, not a sell at the moment, so be careful. Stay, I would stay in with a stop loss. That's what I would do if it were me. Um, all right. Uh, let's look at Gala real quick because that was requested. All right. So, cool. Like I said, this one did break trend uh, at Hatton. So, I managed to sell my Gala right up here. Uh, I had 48,000 Gala, Gala 49,000 Gala tokens. Uh, I managed to sell it up there and get my money out. Uh, I'm going to rebuy a little lower once this thing pulls back because, let's be real, 200% in a couple days is too much too fast. Um, breaking the trend like this is what many other tokens have done, as you see, though. Uh, this isn't a lone wolf. Many other ones have done it. So I'm going to rebuy this. The same thing I sold it for, I'm going to rebuy it. I'm not going to add any extra money to it. This way, I didn't change anything. I just rebought what I made. I made $1,800 profit on this. So when I took my $1,800 profit, I set it to the side. I'm going to use that $1,800 to rebuy what I've already sold. And this will give me more tokens for the same amount of money. If that makes sense to you. Why? Because the price will be lower when I rebuy it. Um, that'll make me some extra money. Yeah, I'm not with the conspiracy weirdo. I agree with you. I have a lot of HBAR. I don't have any HBAR either. But if you do have it, you've made a little bit of money back. Um, I thought about buying HBAR and I didn't. Right? I thought it was already going up a little bit too much for me. Uh and it still hasn't broken trend either. So, kind of got sketched out. I didn't buy it. Um, did get the monthly support. Like I said, it's, uh, you got a good move coming off a of monthly support right here, which is good. Uh, it's showing that it wants to respect it. See that monthly support? It's trying to hold it right there. But there is more support down lower. Right? Uh, and we can kind of go back in history and see what it did before a little. There's not all the history here. I remember trying to buy HBAR back here. And I couldn't because I didn't have the right exchange and I felt like a total idiot. And then all this run up happened and then I got H bar. I remember trying down here to do it though. I was foolish, didn't understand what to do back then. 
uh, with certain exchanges because certain exchanges listed it and certain ones didn't. Uh, but that was on me, right? Um, I had I had just regular coins from like uh, Binance US or uh, Coinbase or Atomic Wallet. And I couldn't get HBAR, which sucked because I thought it was going to be on Atomic Wallet and ended up not being. Um, but that's all good. Um, can I look at Dodo? Sure you can. All right. All right, Dodo getting crushed here. Um, big, gnarly bear trend. Goodness gracious. Look at all that pressure. I mean, this is a super shitter, bro. This name Dodo. But I don't really care here. You understand another thing while you come here enough. I don't care if the coin's a shitter or not. It doesn't matter to me. I'm here to make money. So if it can make some money, I'm down. Uh, but you're pinned under everything here. Um, you've started to break the 50. There's likely a move to 11.5 to the 100 moving average and potentially to 12.9, 13 cent, where the 200 moving average is. But be careful with that. This thing's had a really hard go so far. Um, a lot of other coins have broken trend lines, though, so be on it. Stay on it and be careful. Now, we are all out of time. It's been over an hour. Thank you all for coming. We're about to hit the Zoom over in the Unlimited chat and chop it up for several more hours, though. So thank you all for coming, especially the ones who disagree with me. I actually, I actually appreciate people coming in here and disagreeing. We don't have to fight and be dicks to each other uh, because it doesn't work with me. Uh, I'm an adult with kids. You're not going to do that. Uh, but we can come on here and disagree and have differences of opinion. It's fine. There's plenty of people I disagree with who also disagree with me, and it's okay. Thank you all for being here regardless. Y'all mean the world to me. I promise you it's not what you think. Um, I like helping people, and this helps get the word out and spread the messages. You don't have to join our Discord. 786unlimited.com has it there if you'd like. Uh, we have a special runner right now, 144 for the year. And you get a free 30-minute consult. Or you can do $16 a month to get a month for free, whichever one you choose. They're both in 786unlimited.com. Updated the website today. Thank you. I'll leave y'all with this. In the words of the late, great, notorious B.I.G., y'all could have been anywhere in the world. You chose to be here with me. I'll never understand a way to express how much I appreciate that. Thank y'all. See y'all on the next live stream. Sky's the limit. Peace.